up yodels this is Emily with Rooted Reliance and today we're going to take you all the way through our whole milking process from in the jars cleaning the actual milking um, so you can tell when if you want to zoom in here see how there's a little bit it's like mixture it kind of looks a little gray even that's when you're starting to see the actual milk versus the uh, cream. And I, it kind of seems that the hay that we give her is a factor in the thickness of her cream. So that's all that I have for that one. So right now we're getting about two and a half quarts of milk every morning. And then in the evening, or during the day, we let her calf, we do calf sharing. So around six o'clock, we put the calf away so that the mom can fill up overnight and then we milk her in the morning. This is one of my favorite parts of homesteading. And then the remainder, so I'm done with the cream there, is going to go into a new half gallon. So the way that we rotate these is today, because this is the freshest milk, it's going to get the, the next color in line. So, well, I guess orange would be the next color. So I'm going to Pour that right in there. And this didn't really have a whole lot of cream, so I'm just going to dump it right in. And then this one is going to get a red lid. And that is our process for bringing the milk um, and sorting it and getting the cream off. We're going to take you into the barn and show you how we milk and then we'll show you how we clean up as well. Before we head out to take care of Dorothy, uh, what we do is we get what I call the suds bucket ready. So I just run some hot water because it's so cold out right now. Um, I run it hot so that it doesn't get um, real cold before we get out to her. But this is just so that we can wash her udder. Uh, we personally uh, don't use like uh, iodine or anything like that. Um, maybe that's taboo, I don't know, but we just want to keep it as conventional as possible. And so what we do is we just wash her real good before. And so this is what I call the suds bucket. We throw two rags in, get those nice and saturated. And then I put about I don't know, about three or four inches of water in there with a little bit of soap, just to dribble, just to get it kind of sudsy. And then what we'll do when we get out there is we'll wash her udder first before we milk. That's a good girl. That's my big girl. Come on. Good morning. That's a good girl. So what we do when we get her in here is we just hook her up and uh, we move she's her. got hay <laughs> over here. And then she just likes to come right in. We don't have a stanchion for her. Um, but she knows right where I want her. She likes to fight me for this little last bit. Ha! Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. And so, uh, Emily's role in all of this typically is just to love on her. And, uh, that's Emily's special time with Dorothy in the mornings. Um, she's a great cow. Uh, super easy. We did not train her. Uh, we got her, um, uh, fully trained and she's 
just been amazing. She's very patient with us and and loving. So what we do is uh, I start off with the suds bucket. I got my little mechanics chair from Harbor Freight for my milking stool. <laughs> and uh, we just get right in here. And we wash her teeth real good. Just to make sure that everything's clean. And so we just go right on here. I kind of push up. If you have ever seen a calf when she's getting ready to eat from her mom, it's what they brutal. do is they shove their nose right up in to the udder. And so that's what I'm kind of doing. And that what that does is that lets her down. So I just use this time when I'm washing her to kind of help her let down. She's a little sensitive right now. I think she's coming into heat. So her and Donnie are going to do their thing pretty soon. Hopefully. But yeah, so we just wash it up real nice. Doesn't take a lot. And then uh, we always make sure that we close this gate so that Donnie doesn't come in and sneak up on us. Because he... He has. <laughs> he doesn't do anything, though. He Donnie just likes is, to watch. Donnie is our rental bull he uh he just comes he, he's here for we got him for a month and a half and um we got him to breed dorothy he's been a great highland bull and uh we've we've not had any issues whatsoever if you do this he backs up he's real yeah he's real good so what we do first i'll milk from over here so you guys can see what we do first is I just, I call it cleaning out the teats. And so I just kind of get her to let down a little bit. And then I put it right on the hoof. I don't know if you could see that. Just to make sure that the milk looks good. So it doesn't look chunky or... Like I said, she's a little sensitive right now. But I just check the milk on the hoof just like that. Uh, she's only giving from three teats right now. She has a little teeny tiny teat. And we just, we give that one just a little bit of a squirt. And I just basically keep that one empty right now. Um, I keep draining it out every day just to make sure that she doesn't get mastitis on it. And the calf, um, Lilac, she, she pretty much takes care of that one. She's able to get a lot more out of it than I am. But we don't drink the milk from that one. Just because it's so low right now. <clears throat> Alright, so now. Uh, what I do is I just set my bucket right on my feet like this. And squirt it in there. And I only do one teat at a time. She kind of gets moody if I, do, if I try and do two. I don't think she likes that at all. So we just... You can see it comes out pretty warm. It's still about 20 degrees this morning, so it's a little chilly, but she handles it really well without a stanchion. She moves around a little bit just to try and find where she wants to get hay. Just fine with me. At first it was a little unnerving because I didn't know how, what she was doing, but now I know she's just readjusting. It's hard to stand still for, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Perfectly still. Huh. Yeah. So she did a good job for us. Something I do want to share with you is whenever I'm handling Dorothy, I'm always, I always hold her horn. She's not dangerous, but she's a big animal and her movements are so large that if she just, you know, wanted to reach back and itch her back or something, you know, with her tongue, 
she could, you know, if I'm not paying attention or I don't have a handle on her, she could do some damage to my face. So I, I'm always cautious um, and I, I hold her horn when I'm near her face. Um, but you do so good, don't you, Dor? Yeah, she just loves the scratches. Don't ya? Huh. Yeah. And that way I've, I have control over her head in a way. I'm not holding her still, but I, if she were to jerk, I can, I can hold her still. And then I'm also kind of Ryan's warning. I can tell when she's about ready to move front, back, you know, whichever way. And so I'll tell him moving and he can kind of adjust his seating arrangement to, but yeah, I'm, I'm just here to enjoy the cow. <laughs> so when milking a cow, what you want to do, she's just about dried up on this one, but what you want to do is you want to kind of cup your hand like this and push up and then you kind of grab it and pull down and you see it fill up like that. And then you just squeeze like that. And so this one's just about, just about empty. And then what we'll do with each tee, as she gets empty like this, I'll keep pushing as much as I can until I feel it really deflating. And you'll see it kind of isn't reinflating a whole lot. So then what we do is called stripping. So you strip each teat like this. And what you're doing is you're just making sure you're not leaving a whole lot of milk in there. She really doesn't like the stripping process as much. I don't think I would enjoy it either. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody really enjoys you tugging on their nipples. But as you can see, there's still quite a bit in there, but we're just making sure we're gonna get it all. And as you can see, see she's very patient with us. She's not kicking, she's not restless. She's just a good dairy cow. And so with lilac, what we're doing is we're training lilac by handling her a lot. See how it starts out? Starts out real thin. And that's because the teat hasn't opened all the way. And the more I squeeze, so you can see it getting thicker now. And so it'll just keep getting, I don't know if you can see but it keeps getting heavier and heavier. It took, what, three weeks for your hands to get used to it? Yeah, and it's still, it's still a workout. I mean, it'll get you. Your hands get tired. So right now we're getting about two and a half quarts. No. A little over half a gallon. Half a gallon, half a gallon. Yep, so... I just squeeze up high and then work it out. Kind of like you're emptying a balloon. And also his warning. <laughs> the tail goes up and straight and that's how she knows. But I'm so focused down here usually I miss it. So if she's gonna pee or poop, her tail goes right straight out. If you notice I'm switching hands, that's not a technique or anything, that's just letting this hand rest. Because squeezing these, I still don't have all of the muscle developed in my hands for milking her. So I just kind of switch back and forth. So 
we'll start stripping this one out. You could feel it start to fill up less. You could see now I'm only getting this much milk when she lets down because we're almost to the end. And we're just stripping it right out. And so she lets down just a little bit now. Whereas before she was letting down a whole teat worth. And then I just touched this one again just to get it. Make sure that it's empty. And then we do the last quarter. Each, each teat is called a quarter. And this last quarter is smaller. Watch your leg, okay, girl. There we go. So this one is her last quarter that we get milk out of. And so you kind of, it doesn't feel like it wants to let go at first. But it will. At first, when we first got her, I was super nervous about pulling on her like this. But after I saw Lilac drink from her, I was like, oh, yeah, dude. I'm not hurting her. But you could see when sometimes I'll tug on her in the wrong way. And she'll just let me know. She'll lift her leg a little bit. Not like she's going to kick. She just moves. She says, hey, I, I really don't like that. So then I'll just readjust my hand. See there? So that's her just telling me, hey, you did it kind of wrong. So just knowing your cow. So we're going to get less milk today because we had company last night for Shabbat. People didn't leave until like 9 o'clock. And so um, I didn't get the calf put away until almost 9.30. Which means that she took probably an extra two, two milkings off of her than what we usually allow. That's okay. Um, that's part of calf sharing. And... We're good with that because we're getting plenty of milk from her for what we need right now. See, she didn't like that again. She's not kicking. She's just adjusting. She's saying, I don't like that. You're pulling in the wrong direction. She's my girl. I don't care. I'm just a love bug. She's just so tame and chill. She's an easy cub. Yeah. We'll train Lil Lilac the same way. They both have A2 milk, which means that the, uh, what is it? The casein protein? Casein protein? Casein protein. Casein protein. I'm good with words. The, the casein protein is um, what's beneficial for the human body. Um, we were told when we bought her that she was A2, but we weren't sure. They, they didn't have the pretty birds. 
So we sent in, what you do is you sent in some, send in some hair, hair fibers to uh, a veterinary clinic and they do DNA testing um, to find out if they have the A2A2 gene. And if they do have the A2A2 gene, then that means that their milk is premium for uh, human consumption. That's also why goat milk is so beneficial because that's an A2A2 type milk. And so uh, we are very blessed that both of our uh, cows, Dorothy and her calf, are both A2A2. And so we will train lilac as well. And that way when, and we'll alternate their breeding cycles so that we always have a cow in milk so we don't have to be um, having a gap. Because you let them dry up right before, uh, about two months before they calf out so that they can kind of recoup. And then you have another two months where they just, where the cow just gives to the calf. We don't take, we won't take from her um, for the first two months that the calf is alive. And that's how we kind of do it. So now I'm just going back through all three teats that we do milk for ourselves. And just making sure she's, you can see she's, she's empty. And so then I'll just make sure that this, this last quarter is emptied out good so that she doesn't get mastitis. It only gives like 10 squirts. Yeah, we, we almost get nothing out of this one. And I think the whole reason behind that is because uh, when we got her, um, they hadn't milked her in about four months. And the calf was six months old. And so um, they only milked her for a little bit. And uh, so the calf was only drinking off of, I think, three quarters primarily. And so that's why that one's pretty much dried up. So then we always tell her, thank you, Dorothy. Good girl. All, All done. done. All done, Dorothy. Thank you. It's a good girl. It's important to be grateful for your milk. Huh. And you are very helpful for us. You give lots. So the last thing I do is I just drain out the rags like this because we're going to wash them. And then I dump the water right out the side of the barn. And then we bring all this in to the house like that thank you and here's lilac she'll stay in there for about an hour and then we'll let her out there were a couple times where we panicked where we went and had to go do something off the off the homestead and we forgot to let her out before we left we're like oh no because we i mean she has everything she needs in there but we want her to be with her mom so yeah. So we set a timer. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Dorothy. Good girl. So we're back in the kitchen, and I'm going to show you how we strain our milk. Because you can get dirt, even though we washed her teats, you can get dirt or flakes of hay in there. So what we are, what we used to do is we took this coffee filter, and we put it in a, we tried just the tea strainer but we realized that there was still a little bit of dirt getting in there. So what we used to do is put this in there with the funnel, uh, but we wanted something that we could reuse and reuse. So what we do now is this is a reusable uh, mesh type of cheesecloth and I'll put a link in the description below so what I do is I put that in there with the funnel and then I just pour it right in For that. Yay. 
that's a little too full. So now that we've got our two quarts, we're just going to put the lids on. And I did want to show you, so there's hair and hay and dirt that this thing caught. And because milk is so white, I can see there's nothing that got in our milk. This caught everything. And then the last thing I want to show you is um, our washing technique. So I have a separate sponge for washing our pail. So this part of the sponge cleans the inside and this part cleans the outside because this bucket gets set down in all kinds of filth. And so I don't want to clean the inside of the bucket with the same side. So that is how we milk our cow from start to finish. And we hope you enjoyed this video. God bless.